Hey guys, it's Josh and I am so excited to talk about a very hot topic in real estate. I see so many investors out there, they're worried about what if the seller and or the buyer find out how much money I'm making on this wholesale deal. Stick around till the end guys. I'm gonna show you how I handle that, what we do to make sure that we make maximum money on our deals and not let buyers push us around. Also guys, while you're here, make sure to smash that like button. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm and it really helps us out. At this point, I mean, we've got so many buyers that if a buyer pulls a fast one on us, they're gonna lose their earnest money if they have a deal going on. As far as like a buyer just, you know, not buying from us again because they see how much money we, we made, um, they probably wouldn't see it on YouTube. They could, but where they are gonna see it is on the settlement statement. So when the deal closes, when they go to sign the closing, they see the purchase price, the tax, prorations, all the numbers of the deal. And on there, it'll include the assignment fee, which is the spread. And that's the first time they see it because the contract just discloses the total price they're paying and states that it includes the assignment fee. But when they sign those closing papers, they see the number and that's what holds them in. $10,000 non-refundable earnest money, they're not gonna walk away from that. And that's why I do 10,000. A lot of people will say, you know, are more comfortable doing a couple thousand. That's really just fear and, and being timid. And there's no reason to do that in this business. Should be confident. You know, he who has the gold makes the rules and you've got the wholesale deal, you've got the gold. The cash buyer wants the gold they're paying less in money than the value of that gold or that property. So those buyers that do that, you know, I just, I've got no time for them. I've got no patience for them. I don't understand them. It's a losing mindset. You know, this guy that we're sent, we just sold the property to last night, or that I signed the contract this morning. You know, he's bought a whole bunch of properties from us this year. He knows what we make. I'm sure we've made some smaller deals with him this year and we've made some bigger deals with him. You know, this one's a 20 K deal, um, but I'm not worried about him seeing that, you know, the numbers work for him. He's got a great business model. But yeah, it's just, you just gotta build that buyer's list. And using the agent cash buyer's list, like that's the whole thing. That's the key to it right there. If you do that, you're literally pretty much overnight gonna have multiple buyers on any deal that's a good deal. So that'll give you a ton of leverage if you're just getting started out. So yeah, this used to be the Nike building. Right here, you can see up here on the building that looks like bleachers pushed in, like high school bleachers pushed in, but it's the side of the building, it's kinda cool. So I had a buyer when I just started out in this business. In fact, I still sell properties to him, usually about one every few months. But back when I started 10 years ago, I was selling a few properties to him a month. I would say half the deals at one point in time when I was brand new. And it was great, it was a good relationship. He made money, I made money, I learned a ton from him. He's a good guy. But recently, you know, it's been 10 years, he's bought over 100 properties from me over the years and it's been over a decade now our relationship. And I got comfortable and I, he was the only buyer I would say, you know what? He can just fund the whole deal. He doesn't even need to do any earnest money. I had gotten comfortable with him at some point after we had done probably 25 or 35 deals. He asked me, he said, Josh, it's easier for me if I just fund the whole deal at once. Back then he's buying houses from me for 75 grand here in Phoenix. It was crazy. So he would, you know, I'd send him a deal. We're closing five days later, rather than him send a thousand dollars, get his receipt, send the other 74 in. We'd just wait. He'd send the 75,000 in at closing. And after we'd done 25 or 35 deals, I was comfortable with that. Well, Fast forward 10 years, that became the norm. And we've done tons of deals. Deals that like the biggest deal I think I made um, was like a $70,000 deal. As far as an assignment fee, we actually did another joint venture. We made over a hundred together. Um, well, he made hundreds, um, I made over a hundred. But that particular deal, um, he got upset and it's happened a couple times. And just recently, this now 11 year relationship, he called me up on a deal and he did the same thing. He tried to lower the price three grand, Oh yeah. Unfortunately, they don't allow any filming on property. Oh, okay. No, that's all right. Yeah. yeah, thanks for the heads up. So 11 year relationship and uh, we're a couple days before closing. I sent out this deal, it was actually a mobile home and we were making 25 grand on it. And he does the walkthrough and it wasn't a walkthrough, it was just a formality. He's just seeing what he bought. But he hits me up the day before closing. He's like, Josh, they left. Somehow it looks like they left. There's more stuff there than there was. And I thought they were still gonna get a couple things. I said, I'm sorry, but we have in our assignment contract on all of them standard due to the uh, nature of the wholesale transaction, some personal property may be left behind. So it shouldn't have really been a big surprise. And um, it wasn't a surprise, let me clarify that. And he was like, can you, can you, he's like, we're gonna have to get a dumpster, which he already knew he was gonna have to get a dumpster. And he said, can you help me out? Can you cover half the cost of that? I said, fine. We were supposed to close the next deal day. I was like, let's just get the deal done. It actually turned out that specific property um, 
I had sent out the day before for, I want to say it was like 90 grand, and we were in at 60. And I was going to send it out the next day. We got like almost no calls. So I was going to send it out at 80, drop it 10,000. And he hit me up the next morning, like half hour before the blast was going to go out at the reduced price, which I was sure it was going to sell at 80. And he goes, hey, you know, that, that one, did it sell yesterday? I said it didn't sell. And he asked me a couple of questions. I think it was something about the air conditioner and it needed a new air conditioner. And I said, well, for you, I'll, I'll cover that. I'll give you 5,000 off. And he said, okay, done, send me the contract. So that, at that point, we had tried to sell it for 30, it didn't sell. We were gonna send it out again to our buyer's list at 20, for 20 grand over, but he got us at the last minute and we ended up getting 25 profit. So I was happy. So even after he renegotiated me for the couple grand right there at the end, we still ended up making 23K, which was more than the 20 that we were about to discount it and send it out to our general buyer's list. So it worked out, but here's the thing. I'll never do a deal with them again without $10,000 earnest money in the same same terms as all of our other buyers deal with. And so that would be my advice to any wholesaler out there is like, whether you've been doing this a little bit or a long time, no matter how many deals you've been doing with people, collect that earnest money. So you've got, you know, if I had 10 grand on the line, I could have, you know, played tougher with it. So at the end of the day, I preserved the relationship. I kind of had to set my emotions aside. I'm sure he'll buy more houses from me. And some of those houses probably I'm making a couple bucks more than I might from other buyers because if it's the perfect property for him and I'm in that situation again where maybe I'm about to lower the price but he wants it. So I preserved that relationship, but you know, that was kind of a learning experience and he's old school too. I would say like that's the exception, you know. If I hadn't closed over 100 deals with him and known him over 11 years, you know, if there's anybody else, I might have played it differently. I might have said, "You know what? Screw it, gone to the next buyer." Um, sued him for the earnest money, su su sued him for it, but it just wasn't worth it. We closed the deal and it made sense. In general, never let buyers push you around. In summary, guys, have a great buyer's list. Build a big buyer's list. Use that buyer's list hack that I always talk about, the agent buyer's list hack. Agents are the cash buyers. They know the cash buyers. If you get that list for your market, send out a good deal, you're instantly gonna have more buyers wanting to opt in and your deals are gonna sell. You could be a newer wholesaler. You could be worrying about like, oh, what if the buyer sees how much money I'm making? What if the seller sees how much money I'm making? You could think like, what if they find out I'm assigning the contract? What if they find out I really don't have enough money to buy this house in my checking account? There's all these doubts you can have. You just gotta put all those to the side. If, you, if you're thinking about those things, they'll actually pop up in deals more often than if you don't think about those things. If you just focus on, I provide so much value to the right sellers. You know, you're hearing that motivation. They have a situation. We just picked up a deal yesterday. They had a massive situation. We were able to help these people stay in their home. Um, they're going to get to stay in it through the holidays. They're going to close, get their money that they desperately need right now, stay in their home for three more months through the holidays. Our cash buyer's happy because we were able to build $5,000 of prepaid rent into the deal. So he gets paid at closing. We're still making 20000 If you just focus on that, the good things that you are creating solutions for sellers, for buyers, you are making the whole transaction experience using technology, right? Using your iPhone, using apps that allow you to make cold calls to get, to get deals, using your iPhone to get really good pictures, using email to blast these properties out to the realtor, using the cash buyer hack to get a huge list of tens of thousands of cash buyers in your local market. So focus on the good things, make a ton of money and enjoy this business. Guys, if you got something out of this, please make sure to smash that like button. It really helps out the algorithm. We love shooting content for you guys and showing you the behind the scenes of doing wholesale deals every single day. And if you want to do more, and if you want to do more wholesale deals, keep, and if you want to keep, <laughs> smash that like button and subscribe. Honestly, screw those buyers. Like I've had those buyers, especially when I was, when I was newer, to real estate sometimes i'd let buyers push me around and it was horrible it was a horrible feeling sometimes a buyer would say they wanted a deal and i'd be like yes and then before closing they'd be like you know what we need to pay a couple grand less and i used to call it and be like dang it they're skinning me up but if you don't have other buyers there's not much you can do don't let them push you around don't worry about buyers that care about how much you make those are the wrong types of buyers i'm not saying you'll never have to do a, a deal i just gave you an example of you know where even after 10 years, I had a situation that I was frustrated with. It can happen, but do everything you can to avoid it by having a lot of cash buyers, being really confident in your deals. You've got the gold, having a strong assignment contract. Like you can download a copy of mine. I'll leave the link in the description. The same assignment contract we use every day. It's got all the perfect verbiage. Oh,